back at the back of the hotel after 100 miles. How you feeling? <laughs> Everything's frozen. <laughs> you can barely walk. Is that a one piece? 105. Are those one piece silkies? Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not judging you. I'm in awe. Alright, bro. Alright, dude. Thank you, bro. Yep. You can tell by the clip in the beginning of the video, I got my ass absolutely handed to me again. Just like in 2018, the Grindstone 100 took me, chewed me up, spit me out, and freaking peed on my ashes. But we got it done, and we got a brand new belt buckle. Oh, it's so pretty. So real quick, a little background. The Grindstone 100 was the first 100 miler that I actually ran in 2018. I ran that thing with only six months of training. And like I said, I got absolutely destroyed. It took 33 hours to do it. And then this year, it took 32 hours. <laughs> So, uh, same, it's a different course now. The UTMB actually took over the Grindstone 100. So it was a much different course. It was a much different actual route also, but it still ate me up and just spit me out. So it's a hundred mile race. I think it ended up being around 104 to 107 miles around 200 or 22,000 feet of elevation gain. And it was raining basically that entire 100 miler. I think it started raining around mile 20, uh, about six hours into the actual race. And man, it just was a sloshy mess. There were some dudes that ran absolutely freaking fast. So let's keep this intro nice and short. My buddy Luke, who actually crewed me in 2018, came down again to crew me in 2003. And we we were rushing around, we were being all crazy because now I have two kids. Uh, he has a full-time job, I have a full-time job, I have a wife, I have I have all these other things. And when, I, when the race actually came, a lot of stuff was happening. So I had just pretty much picked him up from the airport and then we instantly started driving down to the Shenandoah Mountains where we got a hotel. We took some gummies and watched the Matrix in the hotel, which was, you know, one of the best like funnest nights that I had in a really long time just because, you know, it's the matrix while you're in an altered state, which was absolutely hilarious. Got a bunch of sleep, woke up around 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And then this is where this first clip actually starts is actually laying out the gear and getting everything ready. All right, so we're two hours out from the Grindstone 100 and this is everything I'm gonna be carrying in my kit. So I got the Solomon. This is the Agile 5 with the Quick Quiver. I'll have my hiking poles in the back. Mandatory gear of a rain jacket will be back there also. I'll have three bottles on me, which has uh, 200 calories each bottle of Tailwind, and then one clean bottle of water. I'll have a headlamp, so this starts at 6 p.m. and we're gonna be going over the night pretty quickly, so I have my headlamp and extra batteries just in case. I'll have my headphones, of course. Insta360, if I remember to actually get some footage while I'm out there. My secret weapons, which are sushi rolls. So I'm Asian as fuck, Filipino as fuck. So I have some sushi rolls. I'll have four packets of Tailwind, 200 calories each, uh, cleft block, uh, two honey steamer waffles. And then I'll also have four hours worth of pills, which are salt, tums, and Tylenol. And I'll have my cell phone. So I have a lot of stuff coming out. And this is for the first 50K of the Grindstone 100.
All right, 10 mile check in, one hour, 50 minutes. Got uh, about 500 calories in my system. It's a lot uh, cooler out, so not really pushing the calories or the hydration as much as I used to, but still staying on it and still getting in quite a bit. Um, so taking it real chill, uh, hiking up some of the more inclines or bigger inclines, and then uh, running up what I can. Uh, it's pretty flat, at least flatter than 2019. There was like a really hard, steep incline that just took it nice and easy. And then running on pretty much the ridge of the top of this little mountain, heading into the second aid station. So just staying relaxed, pushing it a little bit, a little tiny bit, but not going crazy or anything like that. Stay relaxed, staying smart, and uh, it's already dark out, so headlamp is on, and uh, listen to some podcasts. But feeling good, legs feeling good, motivation's feeling good, everything's feeling good. Let's get into this and see how we feel in probably around mile 20. Try to check in again. I won't see my crew until about 50K. Uh, Luke will be there at 32 miles about. So I have quite a bit of stuff packed on me, but not too bad because there are other aid stations about every six to 10 miles. So I didn't have to weigh myself down with a lot of water. Uh, just refilling at the aid stations as, as I go down and then putting in my little cocaine bags. But right, let's get into it. I had started sprinkling around like 20 miles in and then it just progressively got more and more rainy, which is fine. I like to run in the rain. It makes the temperatures go down a lot, which is actually better for me because I sweat so much. But it started raining harder and harder and the type of trail that the Grindstone 100 is on, especially this new course, it got muddy and slippery and some of these steep declines man, you were just pretty much sliding down them. After I left this aid station, this is when things started going really downhill. I mean, I felt my feet starting to feel a little funky, but I wasn't quite sure if it was just the rain and the terrain that I was actually running on. So I kind of just pushed it on the back of my mind. That's really when I should have changed my shoes or like at least checked out my feet to see what was going on in there. But, you know, I was more worried about taking a little bit of rest um, and then getting back on the trail, which is definitely something that I take into the future ultra marathons is really, really pay attention to the little tiny little, little things that might be going on because especially at like mile 30, if you just forget about it by mile 80, you're going to be absolutely destroyed, which exact that's exactly what happened to me. So Definitely, if you start feeling even something small, take care of it as soon as possible because that pretty much derailed my entire race. This was the first aid station that I actually took a little bit of time. I think I spent about 10 minutes to 15 minutes at this aid station just kind of reloading everything, resetting the system, getting in that Red Bull, and then getting a little bit of motivation by messing around and joking around with my buddy Luke. Yeah. It was my back. Don't take my mountain. I've got children. <laughs> so we are how many miles in? I don't know, but I took a fat shit in the woods. <laughs> and guess what? Everybody heard. <laughs> I think uh, we're, we're 32, 32 miles in, in yeah. <laughs> yeah like, on my watch, I'm 33.4. Uh, okay. 30 with. 6,230 feet of elevation gain, seven hours, 51 minutes. Right on, it is about, what, two in the morning? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and it is raining, not too hard. Rain just started coming down. The trail's pretty good. Um, the climbs are like pretty good. It's the declines that are pretty shitty. They're like single track and they have like rolly rocks and like sharp little pointy rocks so I've been like twisting my ankles and falling or like tripping around a lot like a fucking drunk baby <laughs> so 
like I move I move like way slower going downhill than flat because it's like so they're like really steep and and like treacherous and like rolly but it's not it hasn't been too bad I think this year's course is a little bit easier fucking like last year or 2019 you like start your day off with this huge climb and it just kicks your ass like keeping up on nutrition it's not so hot so I haven't been having to like eat as much which is nice um, I've been taking like 250 to 300 calories an hour and then staying on top of electrolytes with the pills mm. I need a new pill pack speaking of that I need a new pill pack Eat these pills with my fucking rice brow. Two pills with your rice brow. Next time you see them, you fuck. They'll be around like 50 miles. I think the sun should be coming up. Oh yeah. You got another aid station between us, though. Mm. So I worked my way through the darkness and the rain and we ended up at the next crude aid station and this is when I started noticing everybody was starting to fall apart or a lot of people were starting to fall apart including myself. I was still feeling pretty good. Um, my legs still felt strong but my feet were really really bothering me. This aid station uh, your, your crew actually has to hike in and it's about a half a mile to uh a mile hike where you can actually find parking if you show up a little bit later. So my crew didn't have every single thing that I needed. I just kind of pushed it on the back of my mind and completely just once again, not waited. I should have just waited and told Luke to try to run back to the car and get my shoes. But man, I was just kind of out of it. But at this aid station, you basically do like a little lollipop, a little like loop. And then you end up back at this crude aid station around 70 miles into the course. So what I really wanted to do is just push forward as fast as possible to get back there again. And then I would only have to really deal with like 50k and I could solve any issues that I had going on um, then, which once again, terrible choice. Hey, Your other That's during that entire lollipop, I did not get any footage because this is basically where everybody got destroyed. I talked to a lot of guys and I talked to a lot of people that actually ran this race and they all said the same thing. Whoever created that lollipop, literally, literally, man, like, I don't know if they just hate ultra runners and they just wanted to mess with us, but that whole section was completely waterlogged. It was slippery. It was like really, really sharp inclines and declines, but with mud. So then you can't really like charge up unless you're super seasoned and you're like a really good runner, which I, I definitely not. Um, you, you have to move slowly. Like I was not prepared. I was not training on such technical trails to be able to actually move on them fastly and confidently. So there was a lot of un, like misbalance and unbalance and everything. And I was not, I was not having a good time. I mean, I was, I was really struggling during that whole thing. Just like I was really struggling during that whole lollipop. And by the time I got back, to the aid station that I that I last saw my crew, I was absolutely destroyed. My brain was absolutely destroyed. The main thing that I was trying to focus on was just trying to keep my morale up. So I was making a lot of jokes. I was playing around. Probably around three miles after I left the last crew aid station, around like 50 miles, my feet exploded. I mean, I felt every blister. I, I, I had a whole row of blisters on the pad of my feet and they were just in agony that entire time. 
And with the sliding and sloshing, it was only making it worse. And my feet were completely drenched like everybody everybody else on that trail. They were completely drenched and full of blisters. I was starting to get a little bit of trench foot and they were just destroyed. So I was hoping that Luke was able to get my shoes um, back at that aid station, but there was a lot of miscommunication, <clears throat> but there was a lot of miscommunication because everybody was bopped out. I mean, my crew was bopped out too, because he was sitting in the rain the entire time, the cold, the rain, he wasn't a hundred percent sure what was going on. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure going on because I was like absolutely destroyed. So when I got back to the aid station, he offered to actually run back to the car, but it was only about 10 miles where I would actually be able to see him again and would have full access to the car and everything. And I was planning on taking a really long break during that last, during that next aid station. The only thing that I wanted to do is keep moving because I knew, or at least my rationale was the more I, or the faster I move, the faster I get out of here, the faster I'm going to be able to actually access a full crude aid station in about 10 miles, which once again, was an absolute mistake. This next clip is just me walking through that same crude aid station and just joking around trying to keep the morale up, but then hoping that in about 10 miles I'd actually be able to access my van, a change of shoes, be able to get some food in me. So I was, I was willing to actually suffer for 10 more miles and do it as soon as possible, but that's what I was hoping. So how many how many miles away I like, went? Fucking getting my ass kicked. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do sub 24. I been training really hard, <laughs> and then my fucking dick just falls off and my <laughs> rolls down this fucking hill. I go and try to catch it and it fucking fall on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I guess I got no dick now. <laughs> it fucking sucks. Wait, whatever. I'm gonna get it done. Hell yeah, dude. That's you? all that fucking matters. Yeah. I'm not gonna fucking go a whole year out of doing all this fucking bullshit training and doing that from thrushers to not fucking finish this shit. I don't give a fuck if my asshole is bloody my dick is gone. What's <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> Just like waiting for you and knowing that I'll be coming to you. <laughs> During this section and in between these aid stations or crew access, this is where I actually learned the most about myself because for some reason there was a miscommunication between me and Luke and and he missed the next crude aid station. So I was in the middle of the mountains and the entire time I was like, oh, I'm gonna be able to change my shoes and get a Red Bull and eat some, eat some cup of noodles. And I was like amping myself up and I was moving a little bit faster than I probably should have with my blistery ass feet. And man, I got to the aid station where the crew was supposed to be and there was no Luke. There was no crew, there was no shoes, uh, the sun was going down and there was no headlamp. So man, my morale went from here to down below and I was like, oh man, I am screwed. I don't have a headlamp because I don't have a headlamp. My feet are completely blistered and I just did about 10 to 14 miles on these shitty feet and I have 13 more to go. And man, I was in the dumps. I was like, I was like, man, I do not want a DNF. I want to just suffer through this. I knew my race was already absolutely destroyed. My goal was absolutely destroyed. And I started shifting things in my head. There was at a, there was a point where I was just kind of sitting there. I didn't talk to anybody at the aid station. I didn't talk to anybody else. And I just sat there in my own head to try to figure out, am I going to write the story that, you know, things didn't work out my plans didn't work out, my goals didn't work out, so I gave up? Or am I gonna persevere? Am I gonna grind my way to the finish line and surprise myself on how much pain I can actually take? Because I was in pain. Every single step 
was painful. Every single step felt like there was a blister shifting around or popping. It felt like my feet were completely like pretty much open sores. And it was like, it was, it was, (laughs) it was pretty dire and it sucked. Or am I going to problem solve? Am I going to grind? Am I going to chip away? Am I going to be the average savage that I talk about all the freaking time? Am I going to problem solve right here, right now? And that started making my freaking little ranger fire in my belly just explode. And I was like, problem solve time now. I flipped that switch right away. I let myself be poopy a little bit. Problem solve problem solve right away. I met another dude that was in Ranger Regiment and I was like, yo, bro, 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 bro. We started getting all Rangery. And you know, if you're watching this video, what up dog, you really saved me. You really helped me out during that, during that actual aid station. Um, I went out to the other people that were actually in the aid station, all the, all the crew, the volunteers, a guy went out to his truck and got me one of his extra aid state or got me and got me one of his extra headlamps. So you saved my race once again. Thank you so much for getting me that, that headlamp. And then I found the medic and he dressed my, (laughs) he dressed my feet. He put a bunch of gauze and tape on the balls of my feet. So then at least I had some padding on there. And when he was wrapping up my feet, the aid station captain came over and he's like, Hey, are are you dropping out? And right when he said that, I was like, no, absolutely not. And that, that was that flip. Like somebody asked me a question, you dropping out. And in my head instantly, I was like, absolutely fucking not. I'm going to get my feet dressed. I'm going to take as much nutrition as I could because I was completely out of nutrition by that point from the aid station, find a headlamp. And I'm just going to charge my way to the next crude aid station so then I can talk shit to Luke. So that's exactly what I did. It was still raining. The trails were absolutely destroyed from all the other runners just sloshing around and, um, you know, pounding that mud, pounding all the trail into mud. And I just charged my way into that rainy, rainy mess. Yeah. I've got a half marathon to go. So, uh, what problems have you been having so far? Ouch. There's like, it's like trench foot, and then underneath it is a blister that goes all the way down here. Really fun, dude. On both feet. I don't know who the fuck made these shoes. But I'm gonna find them, and I'm gonna fucking release air out of their tire. So it's a minor inconvenience for them. And I'm gonna do it every other Tuesday. Look at that. What the fuck? What did I do? <laughs> um. Yeah. How? Uh. So what's what's going on? So I have a cough from Lily, so I can't take a full breath. That's number one. And then I got these blisters on both the feet underneath the trench foot. And then I've got fucking explosive diarrhea. I've probably shit like 10 times. And then we had a mishap of communication last aid station. And uh, I didn't have a headlamp, so I had to borrow a headlamp. And I and I had to roll with the shoes that I had. So I had the medic like dress them for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's it's actually exactly what I probably. It's definitely not what I wanted. It's probably exactly what I needed because I've been getting a little cocky with my fucking running. And sometimes you need to get told what's what. So I'm actually kind of happy this is happening because it's been a while since I've been this deep in the shit. This is definitely the hardest I've ever done. I've been in pain for 
I've been in pain for 60 miles. Like every single foot step I take is like painful. So that's fun. It's great actually. That's what I fucking deserve. It's what I needed to fucking put some respect on this name. Put some respect on Ultra's name. Two wooden legs. <laughs> Where am I going? This way. This way. Yep, that's all I know. On the road? Yeah. I think there's a turn off there somewhere. That last 10 miles took fucking, I think, like four hours. Yeah. Alright, Bo. Alright, dude. I'll see you later. Yep. After that aid station, I had new shoes, I had nutrition, I had some warm food in my stomach, and I was ready to freaking go. My The damage to my feet, the damage to my body was already done, so I was still moving like I had wooden legs or whatever, but the motivation was high, and I was able to actually move a little bit faster than I was during that last section. You know, me and Luke talked, we have been friends for over 12 years, we served in the military together. It's when something like that happens, it's just like, oh shit, sorry. It's like, ah, I don't give a fuck. We'll figure it the fuck out next time because we will figure it out the fuck. We'll, we will figure it out next time. If you are, if something like this happens and you just start getting mad at your crew or you start getting mad at yourself, that's just one extra thing that you have to worry about during a hundred mile race and you should be worrying about your nutrition, your food, your motivation, everything else. Hey, what happens, happens. So deal with it, adapt and overcome, keep that motivation up and realize that these people are out there when they don't need to. So who the fuck cares? So this last section was a lot of climbing. I think it was actually on some mountain bike trails or something like that. Um, it was very narrow and it was very steep, um, very windy, like zigzaggy, um, which really didn't, <laughs> which didn't help my feet at all. But at that last three miles, we started hitting like the decline and the road section. And I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think it was just like the adrenaline of knowing that I'm going to finish, knowing that I persevered with my feet being all freaking disgusting and destroyed. It just hit me. And like all this adrenaline started rushing into my body. And I ran as fast as I freaking could. There were only like 11 minute miles and 10 minute miles, but I ran as fast as I could on that road to the end of the grindstone 100. At the end of it, I mean, I was like almost in tears of just like adrenaline and being so amped up that I basically sprinted <laughs> in the end where almost the announcer didn't know I was coming in and Luke didn't actually hear me coming in because they didn't see my number when I was actually approaching the finish line. So I just sprinted in going <laughs> as fast as I freaking could and we got it done. So uh, Wayne, what's the one thing you wanted to do while you were running out there? I'm gonna take my buckle and... And that's it. My final official time was 32 hours, 43 minutes and 49 seconds which was only about an hour less than my run in 2018. But dang, man, I'm way more proud of that race than if I would have actually made my goal of running a sub 24 hour. I faced so much diversity during that run. I was in so much pain for so long. I was basically in pain for 50 miles, which was around 24 hours left in the race. So I was in constant pain for about 24 hours and I just pushed forward and I kept grinding. I 100% do not recommend this to other runners or other people that are looking into running ultra marathons, but this is something that I wanted to prove to myself. This is the little 
ranger in me that just wanted to fill that fire, that crazy again. And I felt it for 24 hours straight. And I, I got the gut check that I needed. Just remember, it's not all about achieving the mission. It's not all about being on top of the mountain and seeing the view, beautiful view. It's about the grind to get there. It's about the consistent work that you have to do to actually complete that mission. Now, I didn't make the goal that I actually wanted, but at the end of the day, I completed the mission. I loved the process getting to that mission and I learned an absolute valuable lesson. So once again, chip away, become an average savage, and let's kick some motherfucking ass. Let's go. Back at the back of the hotel after 100 miles. How you feeling? <laughs> Everything's frozen. <laughs> you can barely walk. Is that a one piece? 105. Are those one piece silkies? Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm not judging you. I'm in awe. I'm a weak baby. You look I'm like tired. a. This is what you're gonna look like, like an old Asian man. Oh my god, honey, did you get some fish? <laughs> Why? Why? Why is it the exact same?